To be perfectly honest, the title is a bit misleading. This isn't technically a console, but it can be used like one, or two, or three. It looks like an ordinary laserdisc player, but it's got this little slot for expansion modules called packs, which can turn this player into a full-fledged gaming device. Let me show you what you can actually get out of this little machine. You can either have just this one device, or you can have this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Now let's kick off with its basic functionality, which is apparently Laserdisc. The CLD A100 can play standard Laserdiscs, but unfortunately iVision is not supported, it's a bit of a bummer. It's not the only video format the A100 can handle, it can also play CD video. Not to be mistaken for video CD, it's a completely different format. Just for CDs, you've got this smaller tray here. Speaking of CDs, standard audio CD is of course supported too. Now to the gaming bit. It's capable of playing Sega Mega Drive games or Genesis in the US. The same module allows playing Sega Mega CD games or Sega CD in the US. This one's for the PC Engine or Turbo Graphics in the US. An exclusive format for Laser Active called Mega LD and NEC's LD ROM 2 or Mega LD and NEC's LD ROM 2 in the US. If you wanted to spend some more money, you could have got this module. It's for playing karaoke laser discs, but I doubt anybody outside of Japan would ever use it. Another quite useless module is this one. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I can't test it, but it's a sort of computer interface which, when connected through a serial port to a computer, you're able to control the Pioneer remotely. Then you could have got these 3D goggles. Some of the Mega LD and NEC LD games supported the use of these goggles. The bummer is, when you bought these, you also needed to buy an additional adapter. I couldn't find it anywhere for the review. LaserActive isn't Pioneer's first venture into gaming systems in conjunction with Sega. It was 1983 and Pioneer came out with TV Video Game Pack SDG5. It was an expansion module for Pioneer's seat tele. It could play games for Sega's SG-1000 and SC-3000. Ten years later, Pioneer came out with LaserActive for Japanese and US markets only as a sort of home entertainment system and this time NEC joined the club. It was quite pricey, the basic system without any modules cost about $1000, which is roughly twice as much in today's money. If you wanted a module, you had to squeeze out another $600. Fully equipped LaserActive system could cost you about $4000. It's still pretty expensive though. For a working unit, you can pay a hefty sum on eBay. The packs were sold together with controllers. They seem to be just rebranded Sega and NEC controllers, but that's understandable. The entire system wasn't a bad idea. However, standalone Sega Genesis with Sega CD cost 400 US dollars at the time, so I don't see any benefit by buying a much more expensive device, unless it's better in some way. Better graphics, better sound, faster, or some additional features. I'll try to find out later on. The one I've got is a Japanese version, and since neither Japanese Mega Drive or PC Engine can play European or US stuff and vice versa, I wonder if the Pioneer can. Pioneer wasn't the only one selling this player, NEC was selling it rebranded under PCE LD1 name, but it's even rarer than the Pioneer and it was released only in Japan. The problem with A100 was its video outputs, or rather lack thereof. What you can find at the back is measly composite outputs. It's quite embarrassing for such an expensive device not to include RGB, SCART or, or at least S-Video. Fortunately for me and others that want to use it nowadays, there's a bloke that makes mods for the A100, and one of them is RGB output. Modding the Pioneer involves taking apart the player and some soldering action. It's not anything hard to do, it's pretty much straightforward, and I'll see if it's worth the time and the money spent on the mod. As I said before, it can't play high-vision laser discs. For such an expensive device, Pioneer could have integrated high vision support. I had five of these units, and every single one of them, except for this one, had a problem with lifting a disc. It seems like the motor that lifts discs gets weak over time, and in the end, it's not able to lift a disc properly. Well, bloody laser discs are quite heavy compared to CDs. Speaking of CDs, there's nothing special about the CD player. As most of the CD players, this one can be used as a CD transport by connecting it through an SPDIF optical cable to a DAC. 
to test it as a CD player and thus its internal DAC, I've recorded some tracks on the A100 and then using Iron Sony SCD1 for comparison. You control the CD player with the remote, it hasn't got any graphical interface except for these short messages you get when you control an A. Now let's listen to some Street Fighter soundtrack. The A100 can handle CD video, don't mistake the CD video for a video CD, even though it sounds conveniently similar, it's a very different format. If you insert on a video CD disc, the player just won't read it. The CD video was released about 6 years prior to the video CD and it was basically an audio CD with some additional small laserdisc format content, about 5 minutes or so, which didn't leave much space for actual audio. You can see occupied space on the disc together with its unique golden look. The entire concept was stupid and as such never caught up. I wanted to show you how it works, but only CDs are PAL and the player being Japanese is NTSC and as such only audio CD works. Since the CD video is essentially a laserdisc format, the A100 can of course play standard laserdiscs as well. The laserdisc bit works pretty much the same way as any other laserdisc player, just insert the disc and wait for the player to load it. And again, you control the laserdisc with the remote.
this new program. Uh, Donald, sit down, sit down, sit down, right, here, here he comes, well, here I come. As I said before, the A100 is quite a pricey piece of equipment, and it's a shame it can't play iVision Laserdiscs, also called Muse. Another Laserdisc feature most Laserdisc players didn't have, and needed an external decoder for that, was LDG, which was short for Laserdisc Graphics. It was nothing else but added layer of graphics for mostly subtitles. Now I'm getting to the main attraction of the CLD A100, and that's its ability to play games. To get Mega Drive's games working you need this module, called Pack s one It allows you to play games for Mega Drive, Mega CD and Mega LD. A cartridge is inserted here. You have to be careful, the cartridge has to be inserted backside up and sticker facing down. It can, however, be inserted the other way around with the sticker facing up, but that won't work, obviously. And joypads go here. When you're turning the player on and or cartridge, CD or laser disc is in, the system greets you with this screen. Insert in the media and press employer starts the game. Since the Mega Drive is region locked, I was wondering if the same goes for the pack. And it doesn't. You can play any game you want, Japanese, American or European, that's nice. What about video quality you ask? As I said before, the A100 doesn't support an RGB output, while the Mega Drive does. So if you had a telly that supported an RGB or a SCART, you were much better off with the Mega Drive. Now let's compare the picture quality using composite output. When connected through composite, which is the worst possible video signal type, the Mega Drive's picture quality is understandably bad. Side by side, the A100 looks a bit sharper, but there's something going on with colors. When playing games, I don't pay attention to that, but when I focus on some area, it's quite obvious. Connecting A100 directly to a screen recorder, the picture looks alright. On a regular TV though, there's some strange ghosting. Also, black's not black. Let me crank up the brightness so you can see it better. Now what about the sound quality? There are lots of different versions of Mega Drive, one supposedly sounding better than the other. The one I've got is supposed to be the best sounding one, I haven't tried other versions so I can't tell if it's true or not. What I can tell though, if it's better than the pack. What you can see, and hopefully here, is the Pack S1 clips iron frequencies a lot. That could be addressed with another mod from the same bloke as the RGB mod called Pack Attack. 
When you're done playing or you want to change the module, you remove it by pressing this button. It needs a lot of force, it could have been done better. If you're looking for a reset button, it's sort of hidden in plain sight, at least for me there was. As you may have guessed, playing PC Engine games requires different module. This one. It's called Pack n one The system greets you with a similar screen as the Sega one does. The cartridge is called Hue Card Kawe. To make sure the cartridge is not pulled out or put in when the power's on, there's this thing that pops up when you push power button. Other than that, it works like an ordinary PC engine. As in Sega's case, less of again at the picture and sound quality. And as you can see, the picture quality is a lot better on the PC engine, sharper and more contrasty. Can't wait to see what RGB mod does to this pack. As for the sound quality, both consoles sound exactly the same to me. I can't hear any difference. These are exclusive to Laser Active. To be able to run these, you also need one of the modules, either Pack S1 or Pack N1. They're sort of games, or maybe it would be more appropriate to call them interactive videos made on Laserdisc. Some of these games were developed by Multimedia Creators Network, which was a group founded by Eiki Nonaka, aka Jotaro Nonaka, who put together a team of artists, programmers, musicians, etc., which was founded solely to make products for Laser Active. However, they have created only three titles for Mega LD. It was 3D Museum, Melon Brains Exploring the Mind of the Dolphin and Goku. There were some other titles for Mega LD and LD ROM of course, about 34 games. I've got only one title though, I've bought it just for the review. They're bloody pricey for what they are. Nonaka is a musician and I was a bit curious about his work. After a while of searching the net, I found out he released an album in 1995 called A Key which was re-released a couple of months ago on Vine Record, so I bought one. And to be honest, it's not bad at all. It's actually quite good, and I used it as a background music for this part of the video. Now to the game. Mine's called Space Berserker and it seems it's gonna be quite bad. It's basically a Laserdisc video with a Mega Drive layer in front of it. Not sure about other games, but this one sucks. The year 183 of the Omega Space Calendar. The people of Earth have formed the Solar System Union, SSU.
No greetings from the karaoke module and there's no user interface. You just insert the disc and press play either on the player or the remote. And of course the karaoke module uses internal LDG decoder to display the subtitles. Since YouTube doesn't know what the fair use means, I can't play the disc here unfortunately, but I can at least show you how it looks like and how it works. It's got two microphone inputs on the front panel and some controls. You can use two mics simultaneously and control the volume for each mic separately. Mic echo is quite self-explanatory. Balance means you can either lower the volume just for the music or a singer. These buttons adjust a pitch. This one turns off vocal track. And these cycle through different modes of audio and surround. The most useless module is this one, PEC PC1. Couldn't find the module to buy and test, but it should be some sort of remote control for the Pioneer using PC or Mac through a serial port and a laser active software. The 3D goggles can be used only by a couple of supported games, about six. To be able to use the goggles with the laser active, you had to buy an additional adapter, which goes here. The goggles use simple system of quickly in turns closing and opening left and right lens, which creates sort of 3D impression. They can also be used with your master system, but you have to buy another adapter. In case you're wondering what happens when there's no module inserted and you load a game or karaoke laser disc, you get this message. Well, the A100 could have been a rather excellent machine if and only if it went for two things. Rubbish price and if it had at least S video output. Like this you get worse picture quality than original Mega Drive and PC Engine. Three things actually, the sound quality of PEC S1. Well, four things, I forgot about missing iVision support. If I take the picture quality aside, it's a cracking little device. It can handle audio CDs, standard laser discs, karaoke laser discs, CD video, Mega Drive games, Mega CD games, PC Engine games, Mega LD and NEC LD. But for the original price, it wasn't worth it. And atrocious sales support my claim. For today's prices, it's even less appealing as a device you'd want to use. It's just a rare but rather interesting collector's item. If I'd want to play a Mega Drive game, I'd either fire up my Mega Drive or better yet an emulator. Same goes for the PC Engine. And that concludes the first part of the review. The second part is gonna be about the RGB mod and the pack attack. If you've got something to say, leave a comment and see you next time. Cheers.